Hello, I'm Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. If there's one thing that's missing from Affinity Photo, it's a photo library manager. That's why today I'm going to share what's arguably the best free photo library software to use with Affinity Photo. I'll also be explaining how to configure both pieces of software to work together better. You'll find a tutorial on my website with more information about how to do this, as well as being able to download it as a PDF. I'll include the link to the tutorial in the YouTube information below. First off then, here's the big shocker. The best free library manager you can get is Adobe Bridge. That's going to surprise a lot of people because most people think Adobe Bridge is a paid for subscription, but that's not true. You do need an Adobe account, but you can then download and use Bridge for free. In case you haven't looked at Adobe Bridge for a while, here are a few things you can do in the Essentials screen. Over on the left, you have the Folders panel, where you can browse through any of the folders on your computer or external hard drives. When you select one of these, you'll see a grid of thumbnails previewing the images and files in that folder. If you select one of these, you can see a preview on the right along with the image metadata. All the features you'd expect in a good library manager are here. For example, I can apply a star rating to my image or images. I can also apply a colour label to the images and edit the meaning of these labels in the bridge preferences. If you want to use keywords to organise your photos, you can apply them in the keywords panel, as well as maintaining your own keyword list. Over on the left of the screen, I have filters, and I can use these to filter the images to display so that I only see the ones I'm interested in. In terms of organising photos, Bridge can do pretty much the same things as the Lightroom library module can. With that introduction out of the way, let's look at how we can use Bridge with Affinity Photo. First off, I'll edit this image using Affinity Photo. I can right click on the image and select Open With and then choose Affinity Photo from the list. The image now opens in Affinity and because it's a RAW file, I'm in the Develop Persona. I won't spend any time editing this shot because that's not what this video is about. Instead, I'll just click the Develop button which switches me to the Photo Persona. I'll now apply a black and white adjustment layer. That way you can easily identify the image back in Bridge. When I come to save my changes, Affinity Photo saves them in the Affinity Photo format. Unfortunately, Adobe Bridge won't display a preview of the image when reading that format, so I'll also export a small JPEG version of the image. Now when I switch to Adobe Bridge, I can see the files that I just created. To help with the organisation, I can group these together using the Stack option in Bridge. I select the images I want to group and then right click on one of them to select Group as Stack. Now I can reorder the stack by clicking and dragging the images. I'll use this to place the JPEG image on top so that it acts as a preview. This shows me what the Affinity Photo file looks like without having to open it. Now this is useful, but you can do a couple more things to improve the integration between Bridge and Affinity. The first of these is in the Affinity Photo Preferences. Open the Preferences and select the General Preferences. I can then enable the option to save over imported PSD files. To show you how this works, I'll open a Photoshop PSD file from Bridge that I've previously created. Now the PSD is open in Affinity, I'll add a sepia tone to the image using a recolor layer. I'll then save the image using the Save option in the File menu. Notice this time Affinity doesn't force me to save the file in Affinity Photo format. That's because I ticked the option to save over imported PSD files. Affinity updates the original PSD file directly, and you can see back in Adobe Bridge, the image now shows the sepia colour I added. Interestingly, you get a similar behaviour if you try to save the JPEG file. Now I can choose if I want to flatten my file and save the JPEG, or I can save it in the Affinity Photo format. The other improvement we can make to the integration is in the Adobe Bridge Preferences. 
If I open the preferences, you can see there's a section for file type associations. This is where I can tell Bridge which application to use by default when opening a file. For example, I've already changed the Fuji RAW file to open using Affinity Photo rather than Photoshop. And you can do the same thing with any of the image types like JPEG and TIFF. Now when I right click on a Fuji RAW file, I can pick the open option rather than having to pick Affinity Photo from the list. Or even easier, I can just double click on the thumbnail. Affinity Photos know the default editor for Fuji RAW files when I open them from Bridge. As I said at the start of this video, I've published this information in a PDF and tutorial on my website and I'll include the link in the YouTube information below. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you next week for another video.